Hello and welcome to this episode of the Angel Rated Show. I'm Angela Bryant and with me today I have Laura Roder. Laura is the founder and CEO of Meet Edgar and Paperbell. So Laura, do you want to just start by yeah, telling us a little bit about yourself and your businesses? Yeah, so I am a lifelong entrepreneur. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for the last 10 plus years. 14 years, I guess. I'm trying to do the math of how old I am. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, the companies that you mentioned are my two most recent companies, which are both software companies, um, SaaS, you know, meaning online cloud-based software. So Meet Edgar is a social media marketing tool. Uh, we target solopreneurs, very small business owners who are doing their own social media. So we have a lot of freelancers and consultants and coaches and people doing online courses. And Meet Edgar is all about automating your social as much as possible, making it really easy, making sure you're hitting all the networks with all your best content. And Paperbell was launched earlier in 2020. And that's a software to make coaches for coaches to make it really easy to run their business. So we handle your billing, we handle your scheduling, your client management, uh, basically, we're a new kind of tool uh, that you use to run an online coaching business. And coaching meaning like life coaches or business coaches, not like football coaches. <laughs> Fair enough. So what in, in either of those cases, what was the reason behind you starting those businesses, those software companies? Yeah, you know, a theme that I've seen in my life and what I like to create is really all about creating a lot more space and ease. Uh, so the way that I have run my businesses is kind of unique in that um, I've mostly worked part-time since I started um, since I started Meet Edgar, I was actually pregnant when I launched Meet Edgar, went on maternity leave in the first year. Uh, I work part-time now, even with everything I have going on. And, you know, I'm a big believer in creating a business that you love and not sacrificing your life for your business. So that's a theme I see in both Meet Edgar and Paperbell is I think if you're, if you're not someone who creates software, sometimes you don't know everything that software could be doing for you. I mean, obviously you're very passionate about all the things that can be done with software. That's you know what your website is all about. And I find that so many people just are still doing a lot of things manually that they just don't need to be doing because you can just hire software to do that for you. It's, it's all, it all happens magically, automatically. Um, and that's actually a really, really valuable factor in freeing up more of your own time is getting really savvy about using these tools for your business. So would you describe that as sort of the purpose behind the businesses? Is it about, it's about creating that ease for other people and making them be able to focus on the things that they only they can do that they're brilliant at? Exactly, exactly. So with Paperbell, you know, we talk about how if you're a coach, you, you do it because you love coaching, right? Not because you love figuring out time zone converters and trying to make sure that, you know, 6 p.m. for them is 4 p.m. for you. Like, that's not why anyone became a coach. You became a coach because you love experiencing that client transformation. So yes, that's definitely a big purpose for me. And same with social media, right? Like it can be fun to be on social media, but just sending out the updates to Twitter and organizing what you're doing for the week. I mean, some people love it and some people think it's fun. A lot of business owners, it's just sort of a chore that you have to get done to promote your business. So whatever I can do to help take care of or automate those chores for people, I mean, I think it's sort of the dream. Like if you're a coach, it's the dream that you could just work with your clients and you would never have to market, you know, you would never have to do billing. Like you could just like show up and help people. So I think whatever I can do to get people closer to that dream. And before you started doing software stuff, you were, you were, were you coaching yourself? Yeah. So I was mostly in kind of the online course world. Um, but I've also done business coaching and marketing coaching. I was, um, a web designer when I first started. So it's kind of all been in the space of like websites and online marketing and social media marketing. Okay, so what then, was there a trigger or something that happened that made you start moving towards the software side of things? Yeah, so before I launched Meet Edgar, I was teaching 
uh, courses primarily about social media marketing. And there was one course in particular that you can still you can still take today if you look up Social Brilliant. It's called Social Brilliant, and basically in Social Brilliant, I created this whole methodology for how to manage your social media in a way that was making sure to keep repurposing all of your content. You know, most entrepreneurs are creating a ton of evergreen content, meaning it's still just as useful two years from now as it is today. But the problem that I saw then. It's still the problem that I see today. A lot of people don't bother to keep showing their content, right? They record a podcast or they write a blog post and they promote it that week. But if you discover them a month later, six months later, three years later, you might never see that great piece of content. So basically I had a manual system involving lots of color coded spreadsheets that I was teaching people as a way to sort of manage and a strategy for their social media. And the way I got into software was really meeting my husband, Chris. So my husband, Chris, is my co-founder. He's the software developer that has built um, Meet Edgar originally and now has built Paperbell. And basically, I, not being a software developer, I didn't understand why the social media tools didn't do all these things that I was teaching people to do. But I was like, I guess they do. I guess they can't, I don't know. It seemed really obvious to me, all these ideas I had for Meet Edgar. I didn't understand why the tools at the time were doing it, but Chris is like, yeah, tools could do that. Like I, I could build that. So I'm like, great, do it. And that's, that's how I got into software. <laughs> Fantastic. And for, I mean, I guess people looking at you now might think that you have a really massive team and that there's lots of you, you know, and that you are maybe slightly disconnected from people who are coaching and who are one man bands and, you mm -hmm. know, just on their own solopreneurs, but that's not the case. Is it? It's just still just you and your husband. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, it's kind of fun right now because I'm really experiencing two really different ways to work. So for me, Edgar, I am largely out of the business. Uh, we have a president that runs the company. You know, we have an executive team that runs the company. So I'm just doing very high level advising for Paperbell at the time of this recording, it's me and Chris, I mean, I've, I've just hired a, a VA, you know, like we have a few little freelancers and stuff helping us. I'm doing all the customer service myself. Um, so yeah, I'm, we're still in the early days where it's, it's all, I'm kind of doing everything. It's all very hands-on, which is actually really fun and I'm really enjoying. So that's very similar, I guess, to a, yeah, a lot of the coaches that would be mm. one, looking to use it. And what's your vision for the for either company or both companies moving forwards for the next you know five or ten years? Where would you like to see them heading? I mean, for Paperbell, my vision is just to really create a new category for software. So right now, uh, there have been some tools that have come before us that help in some similar ways of helping coaches manage their business, but none of them have really become mainstream like there's i would say most coaches still don't know these tools you know i would say part of the reason is that none of them were quite as good as paperbell is i of course think that paperbell is the best so knowing how much it helps coaches you know for example to always be paid up front so part of our philosophy at paperbell is instead of invoicing people and then waiting for them to pay you and then checking back to see if they've paid you and then checking back for the scheduling you just do that all with Paperbell. So you send your client a link, they pay and they schedule all in one place. It's all tied together. You don't have to keep following up. You don't have to keep chasing people down. Uh, I just, I don't want coaches to have to chase people down for money. I just don't, it's just not, it's not fun for anyone, you know? So my vision for Paperbell is to really make this a category that all coaches know that they need. You know, just like people know that, okay, if I want to send out a newsletter, I need an email marketing tool. I want coaches to know, okay, if I want to run an online coaching business, I need Paperbell or, you know, maybe some bad knockoff of Paperbell that'll come in the future. <laughs> I know how it is. I've had it happen with me, Edgar, but we'll, we'll still be the best one. So it's okay. But yeah, I, I just, I want to create a new way for coaches to do business where it's just a no brainer that you're going to use Paperbell to handle your scheduling, handle your billing, handle all the admin of your business. Sounds great. Yeah. Sounds like just what's needed and having that vision to create something from scratch and that is different and disrupts, you know, what's going on out there is fantastic. So what is it, have you got a sort of a legacy you want to create out of the back of that or something you want to be known for? 
apart from what you've already said about sort of disrupting it and creating something new is there a yeah, bigger I mean, picture i don't know if i i'm not someone who thinks much about the word legacy i actually kind of think a lot about the opposite um in that you know i think sometimes we have this idea like you have to be really important quote unquote important or you have to be really famous or you have to be really well known in order to make an impact in the world right and people who make an impact in their own families and their own communities among their own friends that's kind of what affects us all on more of a day-to-day -day basis you know like we might have a celebrity that we admire but what makes up our quality of life is the people that are around us. Um, and I think sometimes for entrepreneurs, there's this pressure to do everything really big, you know, to like to, that your company has to be enormous or that you have to be not just a nutrition coach, but America's number one nutrition coach with your own TV show, you know? So I, I like to kind of think of the impact that I'm making on people every day, which one way that I do that is with the tools that I've created, right? To make entrepreneurs' lives a little easier. But for me, you know, I, some, I know for some people, a word like legacy is like very inspiring. For me, it, it's kind of the opposite where I feel like, oh, that's, that's kind of a distraction where I, I feel all this pressure to leave a legacy. I'm just going to kind of think about what's, what's in front of me right now. Makes perfect sense. Absolutely. So we were talking earlier about the fact that there's obviously lots of big issues going on at the moment. There's lots of stuff going out in the news, in the world, lots of problems and issues. Uh, tell us a bit about what your businesses do in terms of either giving back or, you know, policies around some of those issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, this one, it's been an interesting year because I've always been someone who does um give both time and money well much more money since i had my kids i did a lot more volunteering before i had kids now it's primarily money um but i never made that something public with my companies and i always felt a bit weird about it because i mean just from a sort of logistical point of view you know my american company paper bell we're an s corp which means that for financial reasons and, and I'm the sole owner. So like the company's money and my money are kind of one and the same. So when I donate money, it comes from me, not the company. And I felt like, well, why would the company want to know where I'm giving money? Like maybe that's not the same place that they would want to give money. Um, and I think something that this year has really shown is that people really do want to know, you know, what causes the companies they work for, what causes they're giving to. It, it is really important to them. Um, and it's not something to really shy away from. So, uh, you know, I guess like the two organizations that have always stood out the most to me, have resonated the most to me, that I've given the most money to are on two very different ends of the spectrum. So, um, one is Chicago Books to Women in Prison, uh, which is an organization that I used to volunteer with before I had kids, like 10 plus years ago. And they do what it sounds like. They uh, send books to women who are incarcerated, books that the women write in and ask for. Uh, most American prisons have no libraries. Like, People have a vision that's maybe very different from reality about how hard it is to access education or, or just books for fun um, in prisons. And that one was an incredible experience to volunteer for because you have just this very close connection to the person that you're helping because you're literally reading a letter that someone sent you. The way it works when you volunteer is you read the letter, you see what they ask for, and then you walk around the room of books to see what you have that'll be most similar to what they asked for. And then you write them a little note, says, hope you like them and you package them up and you send them out. You know, it's a very close connection. And that's inspiring to me because I get moved by the idea of being able to give people a little help that maybe are feeling like they've been forgotten. You know, I'm sure a lot of people that are receiving this books 
um, have not received a lot of help in their lives, right? There've been a lot of times where they've hit dead ends, where they haven't gotten any help, where they really needed help. So just this small gesture of thinking, oh, okay, somebody I don't know cares enough to read my letter, to send me a book in the mail can be really meaningful. And, and I mean, we would hear back that it often was very meaningful for people. Um, and obviously in light of Black Lives Matter, there's a lot of Black lives that are being helped by that program. You know, as we know in America, um, Black people are disproportionately incarcerated. Uh, also earlier this year at Meet Edgar, which is, you know, the company that has employees, not <laughs> Paper Belt, which is just me and my husband, um, we did give, I think it was 10 to 15,000 that we just divvied up among organizations that our team uh, chose, you know, that they were excited about giving to related to the Black Lives Matter movement. So I feel, I've talk, I feel like I'll pause, pause there. That's, that's one mm. of the ones. No, fair enough. No, that's, it's just really interesting. It's, I, I find it fascinating to understand, you know, what drives people and what is, yeah, what they're passionate about and interested mm. in. And I think it just helps give sort of more of a flavor of the sort of business that you're investing in or that you're, you know, that you're choosing to work with and software that you're choosing to use. Yeah. So tell me a bit more about your sort of some of your other personal values or sort of worldview. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a big believer that one reason why we become entrepreneurs is to be able to do things our own way. And it's so easy to start a business and get trapped in this idea that, uh, you know, you'll only succeed if you work crazy hours or also just ideas about how things have to be done. You know, in the online space, we see you have to do webinars or you have to charge a lot or you have to charge a little or you have to do a Facebook ad funnel, you know, and it can be really overwhelming. Sometimes you look at these things and you think, I don't like that. I, I don't want to do that. And someone says, you have to, it's the only, <laughs> it's the only way, you know, that you'll succeed is if you do it my way. Um, and of course we can look around and see that there's a million ways to do anything. Right. And to me, if you're not enjoying your business and of course you're not going to enjoy every moment, right? Of course you have to file your taxes and sometimes there's just really boring stuff that has to be done. But what your work is made up of in the day to day should be enjoyable to you. I mean, I believe this is something everyone should strive for, right? Whether you're an entrepreneur or not, whatever your job is, uh, for you to move towards a job that you enjoy or find, you know, how you can enjoy the job you have. Sometimes you have to do a bit of both, but especially if you're an entrepreneur, the whole idea is that you're crafting your own thing. So I'm just really passionate about encouraging entrepreneurs to really do things the way that you want to do it. Whatever sounds fun to you, whatever sort of programs you want to create, you know, you, you are allowed to do that. I give you permission to do that. I think a lot of people need to hear that permission. That's really <laughs> important. So how do you apply that in your business? What, what do you not do that goes against the, the received wisdom of what you ought to do as an online business owner? Well, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of it now because, uh, you know, I'm in the UK. Most of our audience for Paperbell is in the US. Uh, and I only work till... 2 30 p.m uk time basically what i'm saying is my workday is pretty much done by the time america starts completely by the time west coast and america starts um and that means that i'm not doing uh you know customer support during like prime time for a lot of our customers a lot of them have to wait until the next morning to hear back from me in the uk i'm not recording podcasts in the evening because I don't want to work in the evening, even though that's been like a great strategy for me in the past is to be, there's all these bigger American podcasts um, that I'm just not doing. And it's actually been kind of an experiment with Paperbell. You know, I'm fortunate to um, be good financially. I still make a great income from Meet Edgar. So something that my husband and I talked about with Paperbell is like, we, we, don't, we don't need the money from Paperbell, right? So if we don't need the money, let's make the process enjoyable for us. Like let's do this business because we enjoy doing this business. So often that means it moves a lot slower, right? Like we can move a lot faster if 
neither one of us works full time. We can move a lot faster if both of us were working full time. Um, we can move a lot faster if we were willing, you know, to work like American hours and maybe have some more of those opportunities, but that's not what's fun for us right now. So we really try to keep ourselves to this for paper, but like, okay, if, if we're not, if we're not doing it for the money, I mean, happy to earn money from it. Don't, don't get me wrong, but that's not really why we started it. It's because we were excited to start this company. Then we're not going to do things just for the money, right? Which you often find yourself doing in business. Like, oh, I'm just doing it for the money. We're just like, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So it's very much about setting up your day and your way of working to suit your life and suit what, mm -hmm. what it is that you want to achieve and yeah, how you want to set your life out. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So just to start wrapping up, tell us something else about you. Um, something like maybe what makes you laugh the most often or what it's like living in the UK, actually. How, how are you finding it as a an American living in the UK? Yeah, so I've been in the UK for about two and a half years now. I've been here a lot on and off before that, but that's when I full time moved here. Um, it's an excellent time to be an American who's left America. <laughs> So some, some good timing on that one. Um, you know, it's, it's fun for me. I think it is, I mean, the UK and the US, I think are very similar culturally. And I think the UK is probably the most similar to America culturally as far as European countries. Um, but I do think it's a bit more family oriented here. You know, life is a little slower here. Um, work is a lot slower here for good and bad. I think it can be frustrating to Americans who are used to, you know, just everything happening instantly. Americans are used to this, what, what Americans call customer service, which English people are like, whoa, chill out. Like, why are you in my you face? Being so yeah. Why are you being so pushy and aggressive? You know, but Americans are expecting like lots of follow up and lots of you know, making the first move and reaching out and stuff, which isn't necessarily how businesses operate here. Um, but also, you know, like my grocery store closes at like four o'clock on Sunday, right? Like the big chain grocery stores. In America, all grocery stores are open literally 24 hours a day, every day. You know, it's just, it's little things like that. And it's, you know, it's not like the UK is so like quaint. I mean, you can still go to the big box store here a lot of the time. Um, but just little, those little changes, I think, are kind of a signal like, okay, there's other things to do besides buy stuff. You know, in America, it's a lot of buying stuff all the time. Uh, that's really interesting. Yeah, really good um, observations that, yeah, we take for granted, obviously, in the UK and think that's normal. And then somebody yeah. is really nice to hear when somebody else sort of reflects something back that's slightly different. So is there anything else that you want to tell us about Paperbell, anything we've not touched on that is, or any thoughts you have about, yeah, online business or software or anything else that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, thinking about what you're doing with Angel Rated, um, it's such a cool idea to look a bit more at the, the values behind the software companies that you're using. Because of course the truth is a lot of software is very similar, right? Like we all have the little features that are different or the way we do things a little bit differently. But at the end of the day, um, a lot of the core functionality is the same with different pieces of software. And I think it's a really cool idea to not just choose on which tool has like the cuter font, <laughs> you know, but instead um, really educate yourself a bit more about how companies are run. You know, at Meet Edgar, um, you can Google our handbook and we have a public handbook with a lot of our policies and how we run the business, which a lot of, I've heard a lot of feedback that other companies have modeled those policies, which, which is really cool. Um, so, now you can do more research on a lot of companies. And I know for myself, if I'm looking at software, I'm always looking for the About Us page to get to know the founders and get to know the team. And it's shocking to me how many companies just have nothing, just have no information about anyone running the company. Uh, and to me, it's a big turnoff because I wanna feel like I can connect you know, with, with the people behind what I'm doing. So I, I think that's really cool. And I would encourage everyone who's listening to kind of take a moment and do a bit of research about the tools that you're using, whether that's looking on their website, 
um, sending us an email. I mean, that was something interesting when, um, you know, the big Black Lives Matter movement was kicking off earlier this year, we started receiving more emails and Meet Edgar asking us questions about what is, what does the makeup of your team look like? And, you know, who do you donate to? And what are your diversion, diversity and inclusion practices in your hiring? Um, and it was really cool seeing customers reach out to us, reach out to us and ask those questions. So you can ask those questions to the companies that you're using too. <laughs> Fantastic. And where can people find you and your products? Yeah, so Paperbell, paperbell.com, meet Edgar, meetedgar.com. And um, you can find me on Twitter at LKR, or I blog at my name, lauraroder.com. Fantastic. And we have obviously both of those products on Angel Rated so that you can look at them there and find out more about them yes. there too. So thank you ever so much for joining us, Laura. That's been a whirlwind uh, rock and, you know, romp through various different aspects of uh, your life and business, but really interesting and great to find out more about the person behind these uh, products. So to read the show notes from this episode, you can go to angelrated.com slash podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, I'd love you to subscribe to the show and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to share this episode with your online business friends. Thanks. <laughs>